Hi, Paul Donovan here from avtechnician.ca. Your tips and tricks about being an AV technician. Today my topic is DI boxes. Direct input or direct interface is what that means. And in the AV world, we will use this device to convert a signal coming from, say, an instrument such as a digital keyboard or a guitar or a bass guitar and converting it to it can go to the mixer board. Now, one of the things that happens is a lot of times when you're getting signal from a, an instrument, you're getting it through a, through a cable like this, a quarter-inch plug. And if you look closely, you'll notice that that is only a single mono check. And that tends to be an unbalanced signal, and it tends to also create a fair bit of potential for noise and interference. And what we want to do is we want to convert the signal that's coming from the instrument into an XLR. And to do that, we most likely will use a device such as a DI box. This one is my DI box, and I'm going to tell you more about this one in a few minutes. But there are such a variety of DI boxes that I'm, and some of the pictures I'm going to show you just shows you the magnitude of how many types there are. So what you've got coming into the signal is what's called the high impedance sound. This is the sound coming off an instrument or guitar or piano and uh, even, um, even a computer interface coming off of there. And these are high impedance, which means they tend to be more, much more powerful than what the mixer board is prepared to receive. And so what you do is you want to use a DI box to convert that to what is called a balanced quarter inch, not balanced quarter, balanced XLR connection. And then when you have a balanced signal running through the XLR, you can run a greater distance to the mixer board. And also this will help reduce the loss of signal and also help protect the frequencies that are coming off of the, off of, uh, the instrument and so on. Now there are two types of DI boxes. There is the passive type and then there's the active type. The passive type, which is not the one I showed you, is more like the ones I'm showing you in the picture here. The passive type have absolutely no power, no battery, no nothing. All they do is convert the high impedance signal to a low impedance si signal. The cheaper ones are very simple, that's all they do. The little more pricey ones will add in a button that you can go back and forth between uh, ground lift issues in case you're having any grounding noises within the cabling. And then you move up to the higher ends where you'll even have a switch that allows to pad the signal. And also some will even have an interface or an inter inverter type switch which will help uh, further clean up the signal. But all of this is done without any power. All it's gaining is the power that is coming from the high impedance, low impedance, that little tiny power is all that's driving the signal. The other kind, as I was mentioning, like my own, is an active DI box. An active DI box that it means that it probably contains some form of power. In the case of mine, it's got a little 9-volt battery. And now what that happens here is this is how you manage to handle the signal, but you get additional processing capabilities. You'll notice on my box that there are two quarter-inch input jacks and two XLR jacks. And through the combination of these buttons, you have the ability to take a single feed split it out st stereo. You can keep it separated out so each of these feeds are separate, feeding out in two channels. So you could have two instruments, or you could even have a stereo feed, say coming from, um, say from a laptop with a stereo feed or some digital keyboards, fire out a, a, a separate feeds for the left and right. And then you can run back to your mixer board on quarter inch cable and have a left right control on the board. Um, this one also has a pad control. It has the link, as I said, for linking the two jacks together or keeping it separate at two, two channels. It has a ground lift button and it has the battery that turns the power on. And I bet you my battery's dead. Anyway, oh, it's on. It's there. It's got a little red light. So this is a, an active DA box. It's probably one of the lower end cheaper ones. But I have had a lot of good luck with this thing. A lot of use has come to it, especially if you did a lot of use of the stereo feature. Now, one of the common features we see happen a lot is when you've got your laptop output coming off of a, a jack such as this, and you're taking this, and if your laptop is next to the mixer board, you could just plug this straight into your mixer board into the line inputs. But what I often do with mine is I will plug them both in, such as that, I will keep it on two track 
and then each of these feeds go out to the mixer board so I maintain a left right or stereo feed to the mixer board so that I can continue to split it out real handy if you're trying to do something where you have a left and a right channel likewise you could do the same as you could have just a single jack just a single jack to go in for say for your piano and then your other jack could be for your guitar and then you split them up and you have two feeds going to your mixer so this is a pass uh, this is an active di box and this is really handy and uh, this one is made by Behringer. I didn't pay a, a heck of a lot of money, but it's more than paid for itself many times over. Now, this one, because it is on the lower end, does not have a pass-through uh, jack. Some of the cheaper passive ones, you have the input where you put your instrument in. Then there's another one that's an output. And what that is, is this has not been adjusted. This is only letting the signal from the guitar or the instrument pass back out again so it can be connected up, say, to the amplifier that might be on stage. Um, this is preferred to pr taking, the, well, not preferred, but it's almost a necessity because not a lot of guitar amps have a, an output that you can hook to the, to the mixer board. So what you do this way is you take your, your throughput, you put your instrument in one, and then the other jack, you, you put that one out straight into the amplifier on stage. Now, as I mentioned, this one is not, uh, no, it is not. It has not uh, got a, th a pass through and therefore it doesn't work that way. But I saw a lot of the cheaper ones do. So that's a DI box, a little bit of information, and uh, we recommend you use it whenever you're planning a long distance run from the stage to your mixer, th through your snake maybe, and wanting to keep the quality of your sound coming from your piano or your instruments and keep the quality as clean as possible. I'm Paul Dunham from, from avtechnician.ca, tips and tricks for AV technicians. Please click like if you like this video, and also don't forget to subscribe. Check out our website at www.avtechnician.ca for more tips and tricks on becoming an AV technician. Thank you for watching.